Antonio Cruz and Felix Vargas were both 17 years old. They were so together in friendship that they felt themselves to be brothers. They had known each other since childhood, growing up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, in the same tenement building on 5th Street between Avenue A and Avenue B. Antonio was fair, lean, and lanky, while Felix was dark, short, and husky. Antonio's hair was always falling over his eyes, while Felix wore his black hair in a natural Afro style. Each youngster had a dream of someday becoming the lightweight champion of the world. Every chance they had, the boys worked out, sometimes at the boys club on 10th Street and Avenue A, and sometimes at the pros gym on 14th Street. Early morning sunrises would find them running along the East River Drive, wrapped in sweatshirts, short towels around their necks, and handkerchiefs, Apache style around their foreheads. While some youngsters were into street negatives, Antonio Felix and Felix slept, ate, wrapped, and dreamt positive. Between them, they had a collection of fight magazines second to none, plus a scrapbook filled with torn tickets to every boxing match they had ever attended, and some clippings of their own. If asked a question about any given fighter, they would immediately zip out from their memory banks divisions, weights, records of fights, knockouts, technical knockouts, and draws or losses. Each had fought many bouts representing their community and had won two gold-plated medals plus a silver and bronze medallion. The difference was in their style. Antonio's lean form and long reach made him the better boxer, while Felix's short and muscular frame made him the better slugger. Whenever they had met in the ring for sparring sessions, it had always been hot and heavy. Now, after a series of elimination bouts, they had been informed they were to meet each other in the division finals that were scheduled for the 7th of August, two weeks away. The winner to represent the Boys and Girls Club in the Golden Gloves Championship Tournament. The two boys continued to run together along the East River Drive, but even when joking with each other, they both sensed a wall rising between them. One morning, less than a week before their bout, they met as usual for their daily workout. They fooled around for a, with a few jabs at the air, slap skin, and then took off, running lightly along the dirty East River's edge. Antonio glanced at Felix, who kept his eyes purposely straight ahead, pausing from time to time to do some fancy leg work while throwing one-twos followed by uppercuts to an imaginary jaw. Antonio then beat the air with a barrage of body blows and short, devastating lifts, lefts with an overhead jaw-breaking right. After a mile or so, Felix puffed and said, Let's stop a while, bro. I think we, need, we, got, we both got something to say to each other. Antonio nodded. It was not natural to be acting as though nothing unusual was happening, happening when the two Ace Boone buddies were going to be blasting each other with... Uh, each other within a few short days. They rested their elbows on the railing, separating them from the river. Antonio wiped his face with a short towel. The sunrise was now creating day. Felix leaned heavily on the rail river's railing and stared across to the shores of Brooklyn. Finally, he broke the silence. Man, I don't know how to come out with it. Antonio helped. It's about our fight, right? Yeah, right. Felix's eyes squinted at the rising orange sun. I've been thinking about it too, Panin. In fact, since we found out it was going to be me and you, I've been awake at night, pulling punches on you, trying not to hurt you. Same here. It ain't natural not to think about the fight. I mean, we're both Chevrote uh, <laughs> fighters, and we both, both want to win. But only one of us can win. There ain't no draws in the eliminations. Felix tapped Antonio gently on the shoulder. I don't want to, I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, bro, but I want to win fair and square. Antonio nodded quietly. Yeah, we both know that in the ring, the better man wins. Friend or no friend, brother or no. Felix finished it for him, brother. Tony, let's promise something right here, okay? If it's fair, Hermano, I'm in for it. Antonio admired the courage of a tugboat pulling a barge five times its welterweight size. It's fair, Tony. When we get into the ring, it's got to be like we never met. We got to be like two heavy strangers 
that want the same thing and only one can have it. You understand, don't you? See, si, I know. Tony smiled. No pulling punches. We go all the way. Yeah, that's right. Listen, Tony. Don't you think it's a good idea if we don't see each other until the day of the fight? I'm going to stay with my Aunt Lucy in the Bronx. I can use Gleason's gym for working out. My manager says he's got some sparring partners with more or less your style. Tony scratched his nose pensively. Yeah, it would be better for our heads. He held out his palm upward. Deal? Deal. Felix slightly slapped the open skin. Ready for some more running, Tony asked lamely. Nah, bro. Let's just cut it here. You go on. I kind of like to get things together in my head. You ain't worried, are you? Tony asked. No way, man. Phoenix laughed out loud. I got too much smarts for that. I think it's just cooler if we split right here. After the fight, we can get together again like nothing ever happened. The Amigo brothers were not ashamed to hug each other. Guess you're right. Watch yourself, Felix. I hear there's some pretty heavy dudes up in the Bronx. Suavecito? Okay. Okay, you watch yourself too, Sabe. Tony jogged away. Felix watched his friend disappear from view. Throwing lefts and rights, both fighters had a lot of psyching up to do before the big fight. The days in training passed much too slowly. Although they kept out of each other's way, they were aware of each other's progress via the ghetto grapevine. The evening before the fight, Tony made his way to the roof of the tenement. In the quiet, early dark, he peered over the ledge. Six stories below, the lights of the city blinked, and the sounds of cars mingled with the curses and the laughter of children in the street. He tried not to think of Felix, feeling he had succeeded in psyching his mind. But only in the ring would he really know. To spar Felix hurt, he would have to knock him out early and quick. Up in the South Bronx, Felix decided to take in a movie in an effort to keep Antonio's face away from his fist. The flick was the champion with Kurt Douglas, the third time Felix was seeing it. The champion was getting beaten, his face being pounded into raw, wet hamburger. His eyes were cut, jagged, bleeding, one eye swollen, the other almost shut. He was saved only by the sound of the bell. Felix became the champ and Tony the champ challenger. The movie audience was going out of its head, roaring in bloodlust at the butchery going on. The champ hunched, hunched his shoulders, grunting and sniffing red blood back into his broken nose. The challenger, confident that he had the championship in his bag, threw a left. The champ countered with a dynamite right that exploded into the challenger's brains. Felix's right arm felt the shock. Antonio's face superimposed on the screen, was shattered and split apart by the awesome force of the killer blow. Felix saw himself in the ring, blasting Antonio against the ropes. The champ had to be forcibly restrained. The challenger was allowed to crumble slowly to the ca canvas, a broken, bloody mess. When Felix finally left the theater, he had figured out how to psych himself up for tomorrow's fight. It was Felix the champion versus Antonio the challenger. He walked up some dark streets, deserted except for small po pockets of weary-looking kids wearing gang colors. Despite the fact that he was Puerto, Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rican like, him, like them, they eyed him as a stranger to their turf. Felix did a fast shuffle, bobbing and weaving, while letting loose a torrent of blows that would demolish whatever got in its way. It seemed to impress the brothers who went about their own business. Finding no takers, Felix decided to split to his aunts. Walking the streets had not relaxed him. Neither had the fight flick. All it had done was stir him up. He let himself quietly into his Aunt Lucy's apartment and went straight to bed, falling into a fitful sleep with sounds of the gong for round one. Antonio was passing some heavy time in his rooftop. How would the fight tomorrow affect his relationship with Felix? After all, fighting was like, was like any other profession. Friendship had nothing to do with it. A gnawing doubt crept in. He cut negative thinking real quick by doing some speedy, fancy dance steps, bobbing and weaving like mercury. The night air was blurred with per, uh, perpetual motions of left hooks and right crosses. Felix, his amigo brother, was not going to be Felix at all in the ring, just another opponent with another face. Antonio went to sleep, hearing the opening bell for the first round. Like his friend in the South Bronx, he prayed for victory via a quick, clean knockout in the first round. The large posters plastered all over the walls of local shops announced the fight between Antonio Cruz and Felix Vargas 
as the main bout. The fight had created great interest in the neighborhood. Antonio and Felix were well liked and respected. Each had his own loyal following. Betting fever was high and ranged from a bottle of coke to cold hard cash on the line. Antonio's fans bet with unbridled faith in his boxing skills. On the other side, Felix's admirers bet on his dynamic packed fist. Dynamite packed fist. Felix had returned to his apartments early in the morning of August 7th and stayed there, hoping to avoid seeing Antonio. He turned the radio on to salsa music sounds and then tried to read while waiting for, the wor for word from his manager. The fight was scheduled to take place in Tompkins Square Park. It had been decided that the gymnasium of the boys club was not large enough to hold all the people who were sure to attend. In Thompson Square Park, everyone who wanted to could see the fight, whether from ringside or a window fire escape or tenement rooftops. The morning of the fight, Tompkins Square was a beehive of activity with numerous workers setting up the ring, the seats, and the guest speakers to stand. The scheduled bouts began shortly after noon and the park had begun to fill up earlier, uh, even earlier. The local junior high school across from Tompkins Square Park served as the dressing room for all fighters. Each was given a separate classroom with desks.